spread of the, the virus as it is going to be a medical response. And as a consequence of that, all necessary resources will be mobilised, financial and human, but those are not unlimited. We are still in Ireland in the containment phase, and we will stay in the containment phase for as long as is possible, but we will move to the delay phase um, and the mitigation phase in the weeks ahead. Taoiseach Leo Varadkar, Tánaiste and Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Simon Coveney, is with us this morning. Minister, good morning. Morning, Gavin. Thanks for having me on. Italy is in lockdown this morning and you're telling people not to travel to Italy. Is that right? Yeah, so, you know, up until yesterday, our, our travel advice for Italy was that nobody should travel to the northern regions of Italy uh, unless it was absolutely essential. Uh, and now that is extended to the country as a whole. So, uh, I mean, it really is totally unprecedented that you'd have a Minister of Foreign Affairs advising Irish citizens not to travel to a large EU member state. Uh, but that is the advice this morning. Will people be asked not to travel from Italy to here? Well, we, we can't control that. Um, but, I mean, effectively, Italy is now in lockdown as a country. That 60 million people uh, aren't moving around uh, except for uh, to facilitate essential work. Um, so um, the truth is that very, very small numbers of people will be travelling out of Italy to other countries. Uh, but the Taoiseach is, um, uh, has a council meeting with other EU leaders today. Uh, it's a teleconference council meeting. Um, but he will be raising the issue of how do we manage air travel collectively across the European Union to try to reduce uh, risk of the spread of this virus. Are you in favour of more travel restrictions? Well, I'm in favour of, of anything that public health experts say will work. Uh, and I think you know politicians need to listen to, uh, to people who are um, knowledgeable on uh, how to make the right decisions here. The truth is that we have no experts on the planet on um, COVID-19 because it's new. I mean, 13 weeks ago, no one ever heard of it. Uh, at the end of January, Italy had their first case. They now have almost 10,000 people infected and uh, close on 500 people have died. Um, so uh, this is something that we are trying to understand more each day. Uh, and we have a great team of public health experts in Ireland, led by the chief medical officer, uh, and we're taking his advice. Nearly, you announced packages yesterday of nearly two and a half billion euro to help people to stay at home. How soon will it be before more people are asked to stay at home? Well, as the as the Taoiseach outlined yesterday, and I think Simon Harris has been doing it as well. I mean, there are. There are different phases here in terms of how you respond to something like this. So we are currently in the initial what's called containment phase. In other words, uh, anybody who tests positive, uh, we want to establish um, who they are, uh, where they've come from, uh, and the likely source of infection. Uh, and so the vast majority of the 24 people who've tested positive in Ireland so far have come from northern Italy, and they've brought it home with them. Um, and, of course, then our... Um, uh, our public health team have followed all of the contacts that those people have had to try to make sure that we follow any others who may have been exposed to that virus. Um, and that's been the focus so far, which is really about containment uh, and minimising the number of people who are exposed to the virus. But I think it is inevitable that we will move on to what's called the delay phase, which is essentially trying to stop the spread uh, of a virus uh, in a population that has no immunity uh, and recognising the reality that we effectively have no vaccine and no treatment uh, for this virus right now. Uh, and therefore, the only way that we have of effectively limiting the numbers of people who contract the virus uh, is through um, good public communication uh, and, of course, uh, providing comprehensive and good health care to people who have symptoms. At what point will that happen? At what point will we move on to a delay or a mitigation phase and that more people are asked to stay away from each other? Well, I mean, in some ways that's already starting. You know, we've um, um, we cancelled uh, or uh, postponed at least 
um, a large rugby fixture. Uh, we're also cancelling uh, essentially St. Patrick's Day parades across the country. Uh, and if our public health team make further recommendations in relation to public gatherings, we will follow that advice. Uh, and I understand that Tony Hulan, uh, who's the chief medical officer, and his team will be meeting today uh, at the National Public Health Emergency Team. Uh, and they will be looking to, to, to give clearer and more detailed guidelines uh, around public gatherings so that we can give people and organisations uh, more direct advice on that sooner rather than later. It looks from that there are kind of two choices. Lock everything down before thousands become infected or lock everything down after thousands become infected, like what's happened in Italy. Why are we waiting to make more moves here? Well, uh, um, we are, um, I think, trying to provide responses that are proportionate. So, you know, if you shut a country down uh, without good reason and evidence to back that up, uh, then I think you can cause you know, significant damage to, uh, to people's quality of life also. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is follow the public health advice that is appropriate uh, given the level of threat at any given time. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm a politician, a, a policymaker. Uh, we need to listen to experts uh, in terms of the recommendations and the advice that they give. Uh, and I think we need to follow that. This, this response needs to be um, health driven uh, uh, and that is what we're doing uh, rather than politicians going off on solar runs uh, and doing things that aren't recommended uh, we're very much working with our public health team uh, with the HSE and with the chief medical officer uh, and, and you know meetings are happening literally every day uh, advice and discussions uh, are, are happening at a European level and at a national level uh, and as you saw yesterday uh, the government will respond comprehensively on the back of public health advice. You were on television last night um, taking questions for some time and beside you was uh, a doctor and an expert academic uh, talking about increasing social distancing. They were talking yeah. about measures like um, closing schools, universities, pubs, restaurants and more. Now, you got briefings yesterday from health experts uh, privately. Can you just explain to us what their thinking is as to at what point more social distancing, more restrictions will be introduced. We've, tw what, 24 cases in yeah. this state, 36 cases on the island of Ireland. At, at what point will more measures be introduced? I mean, I think the direct answer to that question is when it will be effective to do that. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's important to say that the government isn't ruling out any course of action. Uh, and, you know, if, if this... Um, virus take hold, takes hold uh, and starts to spread in clusters in different parts of the country, uh, we will need to respond very firmly to that uh, to, uh, to try to delay uh, the spread of the virus uh, as best we can. I mean, if you look at, uh, and I'm learning about this like everybody else is, but from what I'm told, uh, if you look at how a virus like this spreads in a population, uh, the challenge for us uh, is to is to slow down the spread of that infection to give um, health authorities the time and the space to be able to respond to that comprehensively and to give populations also uh, the the time to actually understand how they can protect themselves and their families so instead of this being a dramatic peak where very large numbers of people um, uh, are impacted by the vi virus in a very short period of time we're trying to actually spread out that curve uh, over a period of time so that we can respond uh, in the appropriate way to protect, most importantly, uh, vulnerable citizens from this. Because don't forget that the vast majority of people uh, who will be impacted by this virus uh, will get through it. Uh, they will have relatively mild impacts on their health. Uh, but, you know, maybe up to 20% of people uh, who, who contract the virus will have a significant, significant health impact and, of course, a small percentage uh, 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 for a small percentage, it could be fatal. Uh, and if you have very large numbers in the population impacted, well, then even small per uh, percentages can mean thousands of people uh, losing their lives. So um, this, is, this is something that we are monitoring on a daily basis. Uh, and, you know, as the Taoiseach said yesterday, really the challenge for the country here, potentially, uh, if the spread of this virus um, uh, happens on a worst-case scenario basis, uh, this is a challenge that is totally unprecedented yes. uh, uh, in Irish um, modern history. If the challenge is that big, though, 
why not move earlier? If the Taoiseach says that almost 60% of people could become infected, what grounds are there not to move to delay and mitigation measures now? Well, I mean, you know, I think that um, uh, what we're trying to do here is to respond to a crisis as it develops. Uh, And if you use all your ammunition in day one uh, and then have effectively... Do you not want to move before it develops? Yes, we are. And we are doing that. Uh, That's why we have already cancelled very big events. Uh, That's why we have um, taken unprecedented action in relation to travel advice. Um, That's why we are preparing now in our health service to add significant bed numbers to decant people from hospital who don't need to be there so that we create space uh, to try to deal with a problem that could become much, much worse very, very quickly. Um, so a lot is happening. And, of course, the advice will be upgraded on a daily basis. Um, you know, the, uh, the special uh, cabinet committee uh, on COVID-19 is meeting again on Friday, again on Monday after that. Um, the, um, the National Public Health Emergency Team is meeting again today. Uh, and, of course, we'll update the government in relation to advice. So you may find that the government moves Uh, to do a lot more very quickly. Um, But I think we need to do that on the basis of good public health advice uh, rather than on uh, on the back of political pressure. But Uh, there may be people this morning, listening minister, who may decide to move before government advice, before public health advice, people who are organising events, people who are organising matches, people who are organising parties, public gatherings, who think... Will I wait for the advice for government or is it the responsible thing for me to do now to keep people away from each other where possible? Well, I think, as the Taoiseach said yesterday, um, I think we should all think carefully uh, about unnecessary public gatherings. Um, And uh, I think you will get advice um, shortly, uh, if not even this evening, but certainly in the next few days uh, on... Um, on public gatherings uh, and numbers and proximity and so on. Uh, but we want to make sure that that advice is accurate and based on, uh, on, on as, you know, as sound an evidence base uh, as we can provide it. So what I would say to people uh, is if you are organising seminars, um, uh, if you're bringing people together for whatever reason, whether it's a concert, whether it's a, a sporting fixture, uh, whatever it is, um, keep a close eye on the, the HSE website uh, and we will be, be, be providing updated information on public gatherings shortly. Are you planning to travel for St Patrick's Day? Well, at the moment I'm due to be in New York. Um, I've already cut my trip very short. I'm effectively going for, for two days uh, rather than a lot longer uh, and uh, the, the Taoiseach has done the same. Um, but obviously I'm, um, uh, I um, will make a final decision on that closer to the time. I'm, I'm due to fly out on Sunday and to come back on Tuesday evening, but um, uh, all, of these, uh, um, um, all of these schedules, uh, I think, will be reviewed on a, on a daily basis. Minister for Foreign Affairs, Simon Coveney, thank you for speaking to us. A Can I just say one other thing, Gavin, Gavin, yes. Gavin, before I go? Because I think the most important issue here is the government will do everything it can and put financial resources behind uh, a plan that will be as effective as we can make it. But this is only going to work if the public cooperate too. Uh, and so people need to help themselves. They need to help them, their, their families, people close to them, work colleagues and so on by following advice and doing practical things like washing hands properly, like sneezing properly, uh, like not shaking hands, um, like um, um, you know, using common sense uh, in terms of self-isolation uh, if, if sim- symptoms uh, um, uh, determine that. And so people need... Uh, to respond here in a collective way um, so that Ireland prepares itself uh, for what may not develop into something as dramatic as has been described yesterday, but may well do. Uh, And so we need uh, the state and all of its institutions working together, but we also need the public cooperating as well. And if we do it together, uh, we can save lives uh, and limit and slow down the spread uh, of, of a virus that could cause Um, huge, huge problems in Ireland if we don't manage it properly. Simon Coveney, thank you. There's information available on the HSC website, hsc.ie or the helpline 1850 24 1850. 26 minutes past eight. As you've been hearing yesterday, the government decided to cancel all St. Patrick's Day parades throughout the country on the advice of health officials. The main Dublin parade and other events in the capital, such as the Festival Village and the Cayley Moor, are among the events not going ahead. But around 100 smaller events will take place from Friday the 